Hello friends. Today in this session, we will discuss stopping side distance on highways. Driving is basically see and avoid action. And therefore, visibility is an important requirement for safe and efficient operation of vehicles on a road. The length of the road that is visible to a driver at any point of time is called the side distance. And stopping side distance is the clear distance ahead needed by a driver to stop the vehicle before meeting a stationary object on the road or any obstruction for which the driver may need to stop the vehicle. In simple words, it is the minimum length of the road which should be visible to the driver at all times. Stopping side distance is the minimum side distance for which all roads must always be designed, regardless of any other consideration. It is near worst case distance a vehicle driver needs to be able to see in order to have room to stop before colliding with something in, on the roadway. It may be a pedestrian, an animal or a stop vehicle or any other road blockage. In general, stopping side distance depends on several factors like speed of the vehicle, perception reaction time and this perception reaction time is the time a driver takes to take the necessary action after seeing an object on the road. That is called PRT. It depends upon the coefficient of road friction in the longitudinal direction, gradient on the road, acceleration and deceleration capability of the vehicles and vehicle characteristics. Even after considering the above factors, the required side distance may vary across the drivers. This is due to the variations in the ability of the drivers to control the vehicle, their training, their experience and many more factors. Therefore, efforts should not be concentrated to limit the design of any roadway to the minimum values laid down in IRC codes. Where conditions are favorable, adopting more liberal values for stopping side distance will be a good engineering practice. Now how do we measure the side distance? Side distance is that distance along a roadway up to which an object of particular height is constantly visible to the driver. And this distance depends upon the height of the driver's eye, the height of the specified object above the road surface and also the height and lateral position of the side obstructions within the driver's line of sight. The criteria for measurement of stopping side distance is based on the car operation and it does not consider the operation of heavy vehicles. The heavy vehicles in general require longer side distance to stop the vehicle. However, this is balanced by the fact that heavy vehicle drivers are able to see much farther due to their higher position as compared to the position of the driver of a car. Therefore, separate side distances are not considered for cars and heavy vehicles. For all side distance calculations, the height of the driver's eye is considered to be 1.2 meter above the road surface. And for stopping side distance, the height of the object is considered to be 0.15, that is 15 centimeter above the road surface. So now, if you want to define the stopping side distance, it is the distance up to which a driver having its vision, vision line 1.2 meter above the road surface can see an object of height 0.15 meter on the road. Now this can be obstructed by many factors. On a tangent roadway, this obstruction that limits the driver's side distance is the road surface at some point on a crest of a vertical curve, which happens due to curvature of the earth. In case of horizontal curve, the driver's side distance may be limited due to physical features outside of the traveled way. So this is one vehicle on a two lane road, there is another vehicle coming on the opposite direction and that is the line of sight. Now here may be an obstruction. Now this obstruction can be, can be a building, a structure, even in case of multi highway it can be median also or even plantation in the median or even the curve. In case of vertical curve, this is the vertical curve on a road. 
Now, if you draw a tangent to this vertical curve, and at this end you take height 1.2 meter above road surface, and at this end you take height 0.15 meter above road surface, then this length becomes the stopping side distance. The stopping side distance is made of two parts. The first part is the distance traveled during perception and break reaction time. And second is the distance traveled during the braking time till the vehicle comes to a stop. And let us say this distance is D1 and this is D2. Now let me explain this with this with the help of this figure. Say for example, a car is moving on a road and at some point of time, the driver sees an object in the form of a pedestrian crossing the road. Now, the driver at this point has to decide whether to apply the brake or not. Let us say it takes some time to decide the action. Now, that is called the reaction distance. Remember, during this time, the driver will be moving at its normal speed V. Now, at this point here, the driver decides to apply the brake and therefore braking starts. And it takes some distance, it requires some distance to completely stop the car and let us say the car stops at this point. Now, that is called the braking distance. And reaction distance plus braking distance is the stopping distance. So, that is how the stopping side distance is calculated. So, minimum side distance is the reaction distance plus stopping distance. Now, this reaction distance is also called the lag distance. So, it is the stopping side distance is lag distance plus stopping distance. The perception of reaction time is important here because the reaction distance or lag distance will depend upon how much time a driver takes to take the action after seeing the object. Perception and reaction time or PRT is the time interval between the instant the driver sights a dangerous object for which a stop is necessary and the instant the brakes are applied. And it depends upon the variety of factors. So, in a simple terms, this PRT is the time interval between the time when something is perceived and the time when action is taken. It depends upon the driver's age, experience in the driving, and many more factors. Now, this perception reaction time, that is the time required for response to a traffic situation, and it depends upon the psychological processes of perception, intellection, emotion, and volition. And this in combined is called peeve time or peeve theory. It is explained here. When a stimulus is generated, now stimulus here in, the, in our case is the pedestrian on the road. Then this is perceived by the brain and then this intellection and emotions are the actions which are done in the brain and then a volition that in the form of a response comes out. The time taken from stimulus to the response is called the perception reaction time, PIEV time or PRT. And this is how you explain it again. That a, a driver sees an object on the road here and the object again in the form of a pedestrian. It identifies the hazards. It takes decision for action, initiate action and the complete maneuver. So, that is the decision time or perception reaction time and that is the action time. So, you must be able to stop the vehicle before colliding with the object or the pedestrian or the bicyclist or any other hazard on the road. Now, this lag distance D1 is calculated using this equation V into T, V is the design speed. And I told you during this distance, during this time T, which is perception reaction time, the vehicle will be moving at its normal speed. So, if V is taken in meter per second, this is V into T. If you take V in kilometer per hour, that is 0 0.278 into V into T. T is still in seconds. And this T is the total reaction time and it varies from driver to driver, but the average value which is suggested in IRC code is 2.5 seconds. 
The second is the braking distance. The distance required for a vehicle to come to a stop after brakes are applied. And on a level road, assuming friction remains constant during the period of deceleration, braking distance can be calculated by equating kinetic energy developed to work done in stopping the vehicle. So it is like this, that work done in stopping the vehicle is equal to kinetic energy. So if the maximum friction force which is generated is P, then P will be equal to F into W. F is the coefficient of friction between tire and the road surface in the longitudinal direction and W is the weight of the vehicle. And the work done in stopping the vehicle will be this force multiplied by D2 that is the braking distance, distance required to stop the vehicle completely. So P into D2 is the work done. And this work done in stopping the vehicle should be equal to P into D2, P is F into W and into D2. So that is FW into D2. And this must be equal to change in kinetic energy. Change in kinetic energy is half mv square because final speed is zero. So half mv square or m you can keep w upon g, w is the weight of the vehicle, v is the speed in meter per second and therefore if you put it then this will be d2 v square upon 2 into g into f. g is the acceleration due to gravity and v here is speed in meter per second. And if you convert this V into kilometer per hour, put the value of G, 9.8 meter per second square, this equation becomes V square upon 254F, where D2 is a breaking distance in meter, V is speed in kilometer per hour, and F is the longitudinal friction. And for two-way traffic on a two-lane road, this is the minimum side, minimum stopping distance. And for a two-way traffic on a single lane road, the SSD will be twice of D1 plus D2. So total side distance, total stopping side distance rather will be D1 plus D2. Now value of F varies with the speed, tire pressure, condition of the tire tread, type and condition of the pavement and road surface condition whether it is wet or dry. And IRC 73 suggests the value of F varying from 0.35 at high speed to 0.4 at low speed. So you can take any value between 0.35 and 0.4 depending upon these conditions at sight. Now breaking distance on gradients. When the vehicle moves on a vertical curve, the gradient will affect the braking distance. When the vehicle is going up, the force due to gravity will be against the direction of the movement and therefore braking distance will be lesser. Whereas when the vehicle moves downward, then it will be in the direction of the gravity and therefore it will require more distance to stop the vehicle. So general equation is that braking distance on gradient is V square upon 2G F plus minus N, where N is the gradient and it is in fraction. So if gradient is 3% then n is 0 0.03 and again if you take value of v in kilometer per hour then this equation for upgrade will be v square upon 254 f plus n and for downgrade it will be v square upon 254 f minus n n is the gradient f is the coefficient of friction now let us take one example just to illustrate the procedure of calculating ssd for a design speed of 50 km per hour for a two-way traffic on a single lane road and take F is 0.37. So first step is to calculate the T1 and D1 is the lag distance and lag distance depend upon the speed and the reaction time. If you take reaction time 2.5 second, speed given 50 km per hour, so this will be 0.278 into 50 into 2.5 that is 35 meter and D2 will be V square upon 254F put the value of V and F you get 27 meter. So SSD will be D1 plus D2 that is 62 meter and since it is a single lane road with two way traffic the required minimum stopping side distance will be 
twice of this value that is 124 meter. Take one more example. Say example 2, calculate the safe SSD that is stopping side distance for the design speed of 60 km per hour for a two-way traffic on a two-lane road where there is an upgrade of 4%. F value is 0.36. So the procedure, the steps are same. The first you calculate D1 and then D2. D1 is lag distance 0 0.278 into V into T. V is 60, T is 2.5 and therefore this distance D1 is 42 meter. D2 is now V square upon 254 F plus N because it is the upgrade. So this is 60 square upon 254 0.36 plus 0.04 and that is 35 meter. So D1 plus D2 is 77 meter and since this is a two-way traffic on a two-lane road, so minimum stopping side distance will be 77 meter. So friends, thank you very much for watching this video. You can write your suggestions and the questions in the comment box.